Hello, and welcome to part five, the final part of the Reclaim Modern Table Build. So let's jump right in. What I've got going on here are going to be the brackets that hold the leg and apron assembly to the underside of the surface of the table. And it's just angle steel with a few holes in it. Larger holes for where the screws meet the table and smaller holes for where they meet the apron. Because where the screws meet the table, uh, that's the broad surface of the wood and that means that there's going to be wood movement so the screws have to shift left and right to prevent cracking and warping. Make sure everything's all squared up and ready to go. And it looks pretty good. And time to install. Pre-drill for the screws, blah blah blah, you know, like you do when you put screws into wood and all that. So you'll notice I've got the larger holes here on the bottom that go into the surface of the wood. And the apron has the longer screws and smaller holes, so they hold a little bit tighter. And these are the side brackets, which are a little shorter, but everything holds great. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit because, really, this is getting tedious, and I think you can assume that I did a good job putting brackets into wood. And everyone's favorite part, sanding! So the wood had a real nice patina on it, the oak especially, but unfortunately I had to get everything nice and smooth, flush up uh, some little edges here that I had wrong, round over the corners, and make sure these filler pegs were flush with the surface. And that means bye bye patina, but it's okay, I have a plan. More on that plan later. First what I have to do is make these uh, cross brace end bits for the table. I design furniture and I don't know what everything's called, so if you're ever making a video or talking to somebody and they get all snooty with you about not knowing what a piece of a table's called, tell them I set the shovel. It'd be preferable to shape this on a bandsaw, but mine wasn't working at the time, so here's some belt sander footage. Mmm, dusty. Really simple mounting method, just pre-drill some holes and get the nice size screws in there. And you'll notice there's a little gap at the top of the leg assembly there. Uh, I left a little bit of a kind of tenon on the top because I wasn't sure how the angle of the legs was going to play out against the surface of the table. And I was able to use it as a buffer to make sure everything was level without having to cut the legs over a hundred times. Now, to put the patina back on the white oak, I used a solution of vinegar with steel wool floating in it. For about a week, two weeks I left it in there so it was nice and potent. And you dip a rag in it and you wipe it on the wood and it does this. Most people refer to the process as ebonizing the wood. Uh, I could tell you the science behind it if I looked it up, but I don't want to look it up right now. I just want to watch the pretty, pretty wood turn pretty, pretty black. I decided to finish the underside with satin wipe on poly because it would really darken it up and make a nice contrast with the brown top. And look at that white oak, man. Those rays there, those weird squiggly lines, those are called rays, and they look sweet. And this is what the finished finish looks like with my poor shop lighting on the underside. It's a nice real light absorbing look. It highlights the form of the piece without being too fancy. So before I add some semi-gloss poly to the top, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get any on the leather, which meant blue tape time. And this, I'm not even going to talk through this. It's just great to watch. And here comes one of the best parts about taping anything up, pulling it off. So the leather has this kind of suede grainy surface to it right now. And it's entirely unprotected against, you know, spills or weather or hand moisture or just weird creepy guys sweating on it. So what I did was I took a mixture of beeswax and mineral oil, 50-50 mixture. And I used the back of a spoon to burnish it into the leather, which means applying pressure and moving it around so that it becomes less like a suede and more like a soft old leather jacket.
And the good part about this is that the table's already finished, so if this gets off of the leather onto the wood, I can just buff it off with a rag. No harm, no foul. And it's time for some in-shop drone footage with my very expensive drone that I can afford because I make such fine, fine furniture. And I'm saying this because I don't want you to think that this is just me walking around with my phone in my hand trying to be as steady as possible. This is highly advanced uh, artificial intelligent technology copters. And I totally tell you what kind, but it was sent to me. There's like an NDA and it's top secret classified technology. So, no. Okay, and this is the totally professional, wrapped up and ready to go in the back of the truck to Wyndham, New York, which is over this bridge and through this field. There's this barn on the way thing. You know, road trip stuff. Really beautiful. And eventually I got to the spot, which was this cute little uh, kind of cabin out in uh, upstate New York. Which the owner had done a fantastic job decorating. Here's some more very advanced drone footage, uh, high aerial shots. And I gotta say, the piece looks great in place. My client was very happy. I was very happy. I got these great uh, beauty shots for the end. And it kind of matches the chairs they already had. Which is fantastic because I didn't want to build any chairs. So, thank you guys for watching and following along on this whole build series. This was a lot of fun. I'm really proud of this project. And if you liked it or like any of my other videos, which I highly recommend, then you should subscribe to my channel. Till then, this is Keith Decent saying, later makers.